Hey, have you ever walked into a museum and looked at a painting that was just a blob of paint in the wall and you thought to yourself, why is that art? I can make that. I had the same thought about five years ago when I went to one of the art museums in downtown LA and I actually learned to make my own art because of that moment. You actually can make your own art. It's that simple and I want to show you how today. If you'd like to fast forward to the tutorial, I'm going to put the time right here that you can fast forward the video because you guys know I talk a lot so <laughs> feel free to fast forward if you don't want to hear me talk. And I've actually decided to make this video for two reasons. In the summer, if you read my website, I let you guys know that I want to make all the kind of arts that I make in all of my social media platforms and I don't want to divide them anymore. I don't enjoy myself when I have to make like one block for my paintings and then, you know, one block for my writing, which is what I consider YouTube up to this point. I want to mix them all because I think to me they go together. So if they go together for me, maybe you will enjoy them as well. And also because in a lot of my videos, you guys comment a lot about how most of you are very creative. And I'm willing to bet that a lot of you have blogs, websites, social media, and you probably have spend a lot of time trying to decorate them in your own unique ways. And if you look around my channel or my blog, my website, I use my paintings in order to create headers and, you know, the, the thumbnails and things like that. And I thought maybe you can learn as well and maybe you're looking to learn as well. And also because we're very close to Christmas time, I thought maybe some of you like arts and crafts and you like to create your own gifts for your friends and family. And abstract paintings is a very cool gift to get and a very easy to make and you can get started for not a lot of money. So I want to show you how. So let's get started. If you're just starting from scratch and you're just learning how to paint, you're going to need a very few things and you can actually get whatever cheapest thing is out there. Don't waste your money if you're just starting out on painting. I didn't start getting like more expensive supplies until I was painting already for two to three years and I was doing it consistently, almost on a daily basis, where I felt like, yeah, it's worth investing my money because I've done it for a long while now. Um, and I did the same thing with YouTube. I didn't have a fancy camera until this one and this is barely the first video that I'm gonna figure out how to focus <laughs> correctly <laughs> because it's such a fucking freaking fancy camera that I haven't been able to figure it out up till now so don't buy fancy expensive supplies I mean unless you're rich I guess and if you don't care because you never know if you're actually gonna go back to this hobby a lot or not yet so anyway so what you need is a canvas you you can use a canvas panel, it's flat, it's pretty cheap. I got these on Amazon and it was like a pack of 10 or 15 for not that expensive. If you're a brand new to this, you might want to start with canvas paper, which is how I started. This is probably about 10 or 12 bucks at the art supply store. Um, and it's a paper that is just a little bit more thick than your printing paper. It's a lot thicker because you're going to be using water, you're going to be using heavy paint. And if you use the normal paper that you have at home, not only is it going to wrinkle and look bad, like you know when um, your notes from school, you get coffee on them, you get water on them, they get all wrinkly, that's how your painting's going to look. So you want to have a thick paper. Um, I use... I use the kind that says that it's made for acrylic painting. You can also use like watercolor or mixed media painting because they're very thick and they're going to hold whatever painting you put on them. And the last option, of course, is a canvas, which is like a stretched out fabric material on a, you know, pieces of wood and you can hang this very easily in your home. These are a little bit more expensive. And again, I would say if you're just starting out painting, I would hold off on the more expensive supplies so you can just get started and play without any um, feeling or resentment or fear that you're going to waste your money or your time. The next thing you're going to need is paint. I use acrylic paint and I use a couple different brands. And like I said, if you're just getting started, just get something really cheap at Michael's or whatever art supply you have around you. Uh, you need brushes. And when I started out, I just used the foam brushes that they have at the supply store. Uh, and that worked for me to just get started. 
and um, if you're a little bit more advanced, you wanna you might wanna get some mixing knives. Um, you of course wanna have a cup with water where you can rinse your brushes. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. This is like a jam, I you know where the my jam comes in. So I just throw away the lid. Or you you need a you need a mixing palette. I have a disposable mixing palette paper thing. You can use any kind of cup you have at home or any like tub like plate that you're okay throwing away at the end of the day or that you're okay reusing and it's going to be filled with paint. And you want to have some kind of a rag that you can kind of clean your brushes on. Take a note at my rag, your paint is not going to come off, especially if you're using acrylic paint. So make sure that it's not something that you want to put around the home. It's, it's something you're okay destroying. And same thing with your clothes that you're wearing today. Make sure you're not wearing fancy clothes. You're going to get paint everywhere. Make sure you cover your floor if you're painting on carpet. Um, just be aware this is going to be a messy process, but it's going to be fun. So I don't know if you can see my screen from here. What I usually do is I do a little bit of research on Google and I put the few colors I want to work with. So today I went into Google and looked up pink, purple, and blue. And this is just giving me a couple of references for color. I'm not going to copy the paintings that I see on Google. I just want to see different types of color. And I'm going to mix my own colors to get try to get to those, whatever ones that I choose to work with. So to get started, let me show you what colors I'm going to be using to, and I'm going to mix these. I'm using two types of blue, ultramarine blue, light ultramarine blue, violet, magenta. I'm going to put them on my palette. So let me show you what I have. And I know you showed you guys my paints. Like I said, I'm using a little bit more high-end paintings, like they're artist quality. If you're getting started, do not go by those. Those are expensive. Don't waste your time. You can make anything with just cheap paint. Just give yourself that time to get better and better and better. So with my mixing knife, what I'm gonna do is mix the white and pink because I wanna get a very light pink going on for the background of my painting. Make sure you put very little red. Now this is an okay red, but when I actually um, feel like having is a more blush type of red, so I'm gonna add burnt sienna. This is a trick I learned from one of my teachers. Put burnt sienna, it's kind of an orangey brown. Mix in just a little bit, not too much. I'm gonna show you the before and after. It's just gonna get a little bit more muted. And anytime that you are mixing, you wanna go little by little. You don't wanna, you never know when another color is gonna overtake the mixture so you want to do it little by little so i don't know if you can tell it's just a little bit muted it's just not as hot pink anymore it's just a very small detail i'm gonna start with the background now when you get stuff like canvas panels it already has gesso sprayed onto it and gesso is almost gonna like um seal the fabric underneath it and so that you have a like a flat surface to paint on and the color is going to grab onto the gesso and it's going to last longer. Again, if you're a beginner, you don't need to do this. So I'm just going to go on and just apply the paint straight on. And because it's my background and I want to make it really bright, what I'm going to do is mix a little bit of water with my painting and just go directly. Oh, also, if you're getting started, you don't need to go out and buy an easel, you guys. This is my easel where I put my painting. Um, I got my easel for eight bucks at the Salvation Army, and I got lucky when they just walked in and there was an easel. Um, and it's really nice and made of wood. And if you're just starting out, you can just paint facing down on a table or on the ground. You don't need an easel. You don't need anything fancy to get started. Now, Personally, I like how in the background I have different lines and different like um, 
effects with my painting and it's not all one color that i'm okay with that i like that so i'm kind of just gonna leave this um i'm gonna put some more painting here i put more water on this one and i'm just trying to get it onto here i personally like this so i'm just gonna leave it like this so that's my first layer most of you will most likely want to leave this layer and just let it dry for a few minutes if it's summer or if you have the heater on and you're working with acrylics it's going to dry very quickly but i'm just going to keep going on the wet surface and you can do that as well it's just a preference next i'm going to clean my palette make sure you put your mixing knife in the water and your brush right so they clean because especially if you're doing acrylics it's gonna dry really quickly it's gonna harden up and ruin your brushes and um yeah and make sure you clean clean that palette knife that uh, mixing knife before you go and mix the next color so that you don't want to mix your colors in your palette um you want to mix your colors um, if you want to mix colors, you want to mix them on purpose, but you don't want them to contaminate each other when it's not on purpose because it's gonna look bad. So it's, it starts to get really like looking like gross, and I don't know how to explain it. Maybe uh, in one of our videos moving forward, I'll be able to show you. But try not to contaminate your colors unless it's on purpose. So because I have a really light background, what I'm gonna do is put a more dark color on top of it. And what I'm gonna do is get the ultramarine, ultramarine blue, and I'm gonna mix it with that violet that I have. So anyway, I have this very dark purple. And what I'm gonna do, because these colors are very translucent, and what that means is that you can see whatever color is underneath it. Um, when I put this on my canvas, it's not gonna show up um, very brightly yet. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just grab a little bit of white, not a lot, just a tiny bit of white, and I'm gonna mix it in. And that's gonna mean, and you see how it changes just slightly. That's gonna mean that when my color dries, you're actually gonna see the color rather than have it be see-through. So, now because it got a little bit white, I'm gonna go and put more violet. I don't, I don't like, I don't want it too white looking. Yeah, there we go. So it's back to how it was. And because it has that white, like I said, it's not gonna be see-through. So it's gonna look really nice. Now I have one color. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave this mixture on the side and I have to get a better way of showing you how I mix my colors most of your paintings are gonna say it's the more transparent or more opaque like my paintings in the back have a guide and I just now instinctually know like darker colors when they dry especially most colors actually I don't know a lot of colors are going to be see-through when you if you put them straight on from the tube unless you mix a little bit of white and now i have this little like bl more blush pink i have this very dark purple and i still have a light blue on my um on my palette board and so what i'm gonna do is grab the remaining white and make my light blue even lighter by putting more white and right off the bat, you guys, I'm going to tell you a secret that it took me a, a long while to understand and that I actually had to go get painting classes to understand why my paintings were not looking good. What's going to make your paintings look expensive and um, more sophisticated is not whether you have more expensive supplies. It's going to be your use of color. So what you want in your painting, you want a lot of contrast. Very light colors versus very dark colors. In my opinion, that's what looks more good to the eye and so that's why I picked this very light pink so there's more a lot of white in this pink and I can see the white of the canvas in the back and I have this very dark purple and for the very dark purple I'm gonna grab this big brush which is my favorite it's just a flat brush 
and I'm actually this is not needed if you're brand new especially but what I have is this gel medium it's gonna make my painting more um, how do I explain to it like have you ever looked at paintings that um, they have texture on the surface? Maybe you looked at some of my paintings on my Instagram or even on my YouTube channel. You can see that you can literally see the brush stroke of the paint and like almost like the paint is on top of the of the surface. Like I don't know if that makes sense. This is what's gonna get you to get that texture. This makes the painting harden up in a more thick way. Whereas if you just put this painting straight from the tube, it's just gonna go flat once it dries out. So, again, I don't wanna mix colors, so I'm separating. I'm using different mixing knives because I want my blue to be thick, my light blue, and I want my dark purple to be thick. And you wanna use of this gel less than half of the paint that you're using, especially if you're using dark paints because it's a white gel, again, you're gonna get a little bit of that whiteness looking if you use too much. So make sure to mix your color again if you need to. Okay, we're almost done, you guys. So because I have some color on my mixing knife, what I'm gonna do is just And we're almost done, you guys. So um, what I'm gonna do is get my, because my mixing knife has paint on it, I'm just gonna put it right on on the canvas. And I like to kind of have an, you wanna on your painting have an area of focus, but you also want to direct your eye around the canvas. So what I'm gonna do is start from one corner going up. And I'm going to grab my brush. This is my favorite brush. It's a big, flat brush. And I'm just going to... I'm just going to play. Really. I like to go in a more circular motion. I don't know why. That's just naturally what I love to do. It's not what you have to do. And as you can see, my eye is already going up. And... There's also going up this way up here. Well, I can see the brush strokes that I made earlier. So maybe I wanna follow the same line. And then again with the brush, just go. Here. Now this kinda looks ugly, but that's okay. I can grab my lighter color. Now this kinda looks ugly, but that's okay. I can grab my lighter color, put some of that purple back in, and now it looks more intentional. And again, put some of that purple back in, and now it looks more intentional. And again, like I was saying, don't mix your colors unless it's intentional. So now we're gonna mix them here. Because the purple is so dark that the blue is gonna look really beautiful against it. And you can even put it on your brush. And again, because I put that gel medium, this painting is thick. So my purpose in putting on this paint is not to get a flat surface, it's just to get that brush stroke. I want more, I want to have, I want it to stand out, I want to have that texture. And you can, I can really honestly finish this painting right here. It looks pretty cool in my opinion. It is very simple, but it's very sophisticated and elegant. And like some famous artist said, the highest form of sophistication is simplicity. Or, or in some kind of other words, they got to that message. <laughs> so if you have something very simple, don't be afraid to just stop. I always, a lot of the time, make the mistake of not stopping. So I'm just going to stop myself here. And what I'm going to do, 
I'm gonna grab a very small brush and sign it at the bottom with my name. I'm gonna use that violet. Don't worry about it being perfect. I don't, you don't want, personally, I don't want my signature to detract from my painting, so I don't care if it looks that good. So that's it. I mean, that took me, it took me about a half an hour, and I think it only took me that long because I'm trying to figure out how to record this painting, um, how to record this video for you guys. So this really can take you a very short amount of time. And well, I think make this painting pretty again is the contrasting colors we have the very dark purple in the background your eye moves from one place in the canvas to the other and you exit the canvas and for a viewer that's actually very pleasant to look at um, and of course in the back i have the other brush strokes going in a different direction but they are not competing because it's such a light color the pink is not competing with the other colors um, and like I said, if you just want to know what colors look good together, go on Google and look at what colors, what other artists have made. And like you can see, I did not copy any of my reference pictures. I made my own pictures. I only referenced their color. And that's a good way to kind of help yourself get started and kind of um, have an ending point. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I actually had a lot of fun making it. And I hope um, that you want to see more. Please let me know in the comments if there's anything you'd like to learn. I personally only paint in acrylics, so that's all I'm going to be sharing. But please let me know in the comments if you have any specific videos or ideas you'd like to see. Um, I will see you in the next video. Please subscribe if you'd like to continue talking about world domination. And personally, I think that making yourself feel good by creating things that are beautiful in your life or making others feel better when you give them a present, when you make something for them, is a way to help yourself have power and you can change the world once you are powerful. So I don't agree with the idea that art is meaningless and we're still in the same path of continuing to talk about world domination by filling yourself with pleasure and on that note, going on the path to find your own power. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.